Previously, Yuya's physical appearance had made him the subject of scorn and ridicule, resulting in a life marked by isolation and loneliness. His own family even shunned him, but his grandfather remained a beacon of love and counsel, urging him always to lend a helping hand to others. One fateful day, Yuya rescued Cory from a band of miscreants, sustaining a brutal thrashing in the process. Tragically, his beloved grandfather passed away, leaving his worldly possessions to all but his own kin. Yuya was left isolated and tormented, his parents abandoning him for his inability to inherit. In a fit of rage, he struck his bathroom wall, revealing his grandfather's secret room, adorned with antiques and curios. Beyond a mysterious door lay a fantastical realm of magic and wonder, where he found himself on a journey of self-discovery, leveling up his skills and abilities. Little did he know that the upgrades he received in the virtual world had an unexpected effect on his real-life appearance. The story continues with Yuuya, having chosen Ping Pong as his game for the upcoming ballgame tournament, expresses uncertainty about his chances of winning. Nevertheless, he is determined to give it his all. Stepping outside the school, he is approached by a man who extends an invitation for Yuya to enter the world of showbiz. Instantly declining the offer, Yuya's decision surprises Shingo, who questions whether he is letting a golden opportunity slip away. The man highlights the perks of accepting the offer, such as the opportunity to meet popular voice actors and other famous individuals. Grateful for the offer, Yuya explains that if he were to accept now, he would find it difficult to back out without a compelling reason. Right now, all he desires is to enjoy a peaceful high school life. Curious about Yuya's hesitation, the company president asks her employee why a talented young man like Yuya isn't eagerly embracing the chance to enter show business. At that moment, Miu emerges from the car and advises the president not to push Yuya too hard. Shingo and Ryo, observing the presence of the popular model Miu, inquire if Yuya knows her. Yui acknowledges that he has met her once before. The man then proudly shows Shingo and Ryo a preview of a magazine that will be released the following day, featuring Yuya and Miu together. Astonished, they can hardly believe that Yuya has worked with Miu, to which Yuya casually remarks that it was simply an unexpected occurrence. Miu offers her apologies for her pushy president, and the president requests Miu's assistance in persuading Yuya, as that is the purpose of her presence. Just then, Kaori arrives, chasing a flying flyer for the ball tournament. Yuya picks up the flyer for her and asks if she is running errands for the student council, complimenting her on her usual hard work. The company president examines the flyer and concocts a plan to sneak in during the ballgame tournament. They will work under the pretext of writing a feature article, taking pictures of Yuya and sending them to the publisher. With this idea in mind, the president heads to the principal's office to seek permission, and the scene transitions to Yuya battling monsters in another world. In this new world, Yuya engages in combat with an undead creature, defeating it with the help of Knight and Akatsuki. Reflecting on the battle, he contemplates the need to combine his magic and sword skills to further enhance his strength. He wonders if he can surpass his current abilities and become even stronger on his own. As he ventures deeper into the forest, Yuya notices a remarkably resilient tree known as the Hardbark Tree. He learns that cutting it without employing the spirit magic of elves or the secret techniques of dwarves is nearly impossible. Suddenly, a boar appears and attacks Yuya. Recognizing it as a mythical boar of level 10, he realizes its stats are off the charts. Attempting to recover by drinking a potion, Yuya finds himself unable to do so as the boar relentlessly prevents him. Determined to protect Knight and Akatsuki, Yuya instructs them to escape while he distracts the boar. Just then, the deity of kicks arrives and swiftly dispatches the boar with a single powerful kick. Yuya notes that the kick also shatters the sturdy hardbark tree. Curious about the talking rabbit, Yuya examines its stats and discovers its exceptional strength. Grateful for its assistance, he expresses his thanks, prompting the deity of kicks to request a demonstration of their kicking abilities. Puzzled by the rabbit's ability to speak, Yuya watches as Akatsuki volunteers to showcase his kick, despite his body being less suited for such techniques. Might showcases his kicks, impressing the deity with his potential. Yuya follows suit, demonstrating his own kicking talent, which also catches the deity's attention. The deity then displays his formidable kicks, effortlessly penetrating several hard bark trees. Impressed with Yuya's progress, the deity decides to train him further in the art of kicking, resulting in Yuya successfully breaking a hard bark tree with his kick. The rabbit expresses satisfaction, believing that Yuya has met his expectations, and declares that their training can now commence. The deity dedicates himself to training Yuya tirelessly, day in and day out. Curious about the rabbit's motivation, Yuya asks why he is being trained, to which the rabbit reveals that he has chosen Yuya as his successor. The rabbit explains that deities are tasked with training their successors and passing down their techniques. Yuya, still struggling to comprehend, prompts the rabbit to explain from the beginning. The rabbit elaborates that, like him, there are numerous beings in this world who bear the title of deity. He clarifies that the title is bestowed upon those who have achieved mastery in their respective fields. 
It serves as a mechanism to safeguard the world from evil, which he describes as the negative aspect of their world, an embodiment of crystallized malice. Deities like them bear the responsibility of protecting other living beings from this malevolent force. Inquisitive, Yulia questions whether he can refuse to become the rabbit's successor. The deity affirms that he has the choice, but cautions that it will disrupt the balance of the world in the future. The rabbit emphasizes the importance of their future battle against evil, emphasizing that the more allies they have, the more lives they can save. The rabbit explains that he selected Yulia as his successor candidate due to his untapped potential. He asks Yulia if he is willing to inherit the title of deity. Yulia, while refusing the offer for now, acknowledges his need to grow stronger in order to protect everyone he has encountered in this world. Accepting the challenge, the rabbit suggests they continue practicing. In addition, he offers to teach Yulia some magic if he desires, reminding him that if he doesn't want to be taught for free, he can still learn valuable skills from the rabbit. Yulia is taken aback by the rabbit's request to learn magic from him, attributing it to the exceptional barrier surrounding his house that only allows friendly beings to enter. Yulia speculates that the barrier might be a feature inherited from the sage who owned the house before him. Expressing his eagerness to learn from the rabbit, they shake hands, formalizing their relationship as master and apprentice. The scene transitions to Yulia engaging in a fierce battle against a king meth boar. The rabbit remarks that this is a more advanced species compared to the ones they previously encountered. Concerned for Yuuya, Knight attempts to intervene, but the rabbit advises him to trust in Yuuya's abilities. Using his whip to bind the boar, Yuuya swiftly strikes it with his spear. The rabbit playfully remarks that he would have preferred to see Yuuya defeat the boar with a kick. Yuuya notices that he has obtained an SS-ranked magic crystal from the boar, but the rabbit informs him that there are even higher ranks, such as SSS and Extra, with their ultimate enemy, the legendary ranked evil, surpassing them all. A notification pops up, indicating that Yuya has reached a certain level and is about to undergo evolution. The rabbit mentions that human evolution is relatively rare and advises Yuya not to worry. Upon completion of the evolution, Yuya is relieved to see that his appearance remains unchanged. He realizes that this transformation has granted him numerous new skills. As the day draws to a close, the rabbit instructs Yuya to head home and rest. Yuya hopes that he won't transform during the upcoming ballgame tournament. The scene shifts to the ping-pong tournament at school, where Yuya notices the presence of the president of the modeling company. His opponent, introduced by the president's associate, is hailed as the undefeated champion of the national matches. The game begins, but Yuya finds himself unable to respond to his opponent's serve. Recognizing his opponent's extraordinary skill surpassing that of a typical high school student, Yuya remains unfazed, having faced stronger opponents in the form of monsters. Yuya returns his opponent's serve, delivering a powerful hit that creates a hole in the ping-pong table. Startled, his opponent withdraws from the match. Leaving the tournament venue, Yuya reflects on his relief that he didn't harm anyone with his powerful shot. Keat approaches him and invites him to join the volleyball match, explaining that one of their team members has been injured. The president, accompanied by cameramen, follows Yuya to capture the events on camera. The volleyball match commences, and Yuya's strike causes the court to break, intimidating the opposing team into withdrawing and resulting in their victory. Yuya's class continues to triumph in the remaining games of the tournament leaving him disappointed to win due to other teams' withdrawals. Kaori approaches Yuya and requests him to substitute for her injured teammate in a tennis match. Yuya realizes that Kaori's serving technique is potentially dangerous and proceeds with caution. During the game, Kaori's lack of skill becomes evident as she nearly hits Yuya with the tennis ball and accidentally throws her racket in his direction. In a surprising turn of events, Yuya realizes that the girl Kaori's teammate warned him about was actually Kaori herself. During the tennis match, Yuya skillfully plays without giving Kaori a chance to hit the ball, leading to their victory. Overwhelmed with joy, Yuya hugs Kaori, and the president's cameraman captures the heartfelt moment. After school, as Yuya is about to leave, he notices Kari waiting for him at the entrance. She asks Yuya to walk home with her and expresses her gratitude for his help. Kari suggests stopping somewhere to repay him, but Yuya insists that her company is more than enough. In a surprising gesture, Kaori asks Yuya to close his eyes and plants a gentle kiss on his cheek. Puzzled by the unexpected kiss, Yuya wonders about its significance, to which Kaori playfully responds that it's a secret. Meanwhile, in the other world, the deity of Kix engages in a battle with the girl he encountered earlier. To her surprise, the deity employs magic, which she believed he couldn't use. He credits Yuya for teaching him this newfound ability. Realizing that Yuya must possess even greater strength than the deity, the girl shifts her focus to targeting Yuya instead. She reveals her plan to kill the deity after eliminating Yuya and swiftly makes her escape. Determined to prepare Yuya for any future encounters, the deity resolves to teach him his techniques as soon as possible. 
The story continues as the agency's head eagerly examines their upcoming publication, brimming with satisfaction as she admires the captivating images of Yuuya. She envisions the magazine flying off the shelves, but her subordinate expresses concern about rival agencies vying for Yuuya's attention upon seeing the spread. Undeterred, the chief exudes confidence, hinting at a master plan to ensure Yuuya cannot resist their agency's allure. At Yuuya's cozy abode, the diligent duo, Yuuya and Kaori, dedicated themselves to studying. It was during this time that Kaori had her inaugural encounter with Akatsuki, and she couldn't help but find both of his pets irresistibly adorable. Grateful for her assistance with math, Yuya expressed his thanks, but Kaori humbly brushed it off, citing his English teachings as a fair exchange. Yuya, in turn, attributed his ease in comprehending the language to his linguistic aptitude. A flashback unveiled the pair strolling homeward, their conversation revealing the approaching exams that loomed in their thoughts. Yuya harbored concerns about his performance, surprising Kaori, who believed he excelled at everything. Recognizing his worry, she suggested studying together as a solution. As Kaori requested to use the restroom and departed, Yuya found himself pondering whether she would be able to locate it amidst unfamiliar surroundings. Fate had different plans in store as Kaori unwittingly stood before the doorway to another realm, and Yuya, following closely behind, joined her. Intrigued by a peculiar calling, Kaori shared her inexplicable sensation, causing Yuya's anxiety to rise. With caution, he divulged the door's connection to an alternate world, urging Kaori to test its boundaries by attempting to pass her hand through. However, a protective barrier thwarted her attempt, prompting Yuya to clarify that only individuals granted his permission could traverse the threshold. Curiosity filled Kaori's mind as she pondered the enigmatic other world, and Yuya willingly enlightened her. Describing it as a realm brimming with fantastical creatures and magic, he showcased his own prowess in spellcasting. Astonished, Kaori marveled at his abilities, prompting Yuya to elaborate further. He attributed his proficiency to the skills acquired in that very world, which empowered him to confront school bullies and save countless lives from a department store inferno. Although finding it difficult to believe, Kaori's skepticism was met with an offer from Yuya to explore the other world firsthand. As Kaori found herself astounded by the actual existence of the other world, Yuya disclosed the origins of both Knight and Akatsuki, who hailed from that realm. Explaining that Knight was a wolf like Fenrir and Akatsuki resembled a pig, Yuya's explanation coincided with the sudden appearance of Kaori's status window. He clarified that in this world, individuals' abilities were represented by numerical stats. Surprised by the significant initial stats displayed on her window, far surpassing Yuya's recollection of his own humble beginnings. He recounted his journey of leveling up in the other world, a transformation that had drastically altered his appearance. Overwhelmed by a sense of cheating, Yuya believed that without his newfound abilities, he wouldn't have earned the acceptance of those around him. However, Kaori swiftly shifted the conversation, expressing her desire to explore more of this extraordinary realm. Yuya cautioned about the dangers lurking beyond the protective barrier of his house, particularly the monsters inhabiting the forest. Nonetheless, he agreed to show her more at a later time. Solidifying their commitment, Kaori initiated a pinky promise, while Yuya entrusted her with his secret, deepening their connection and forging a bond between them. Meanwhile, within the capital, Alexia returned to the palace, leaving the king puzzled by Yuya's absence. Owen clarified that their plans had undergone changes, leading the king to question Luna's involvement. Luna admitted without hesitation to attempting to assassinate Alexia, inciting the king's fury, causing him to grasp his sword, poised to execute her. Swiftly lunging towards Luna, the king abruptly halted, acknowledging her skill as she discerned his sword's ability to cut through any obstruction. Consequently, she intercepted his arms, preventing harm. Frustrated by her father's actions, Lexi, the princess, voiced her discontent, emphasizing that the decision to have Luna as her guard was her own. Threatening to harbor hatred if Luna suffered, Lexi's words hung heavily in the air, tension thickening within the palace walls. The king, filled with anguish, reluctantly acknowledges Luna as one of Lexi's guards. Seeking more information, the king turns to Owen, who reveals Luna's past as the renowned headhunter of the Dark Guild. Puzzled by the connection to Yuuya, the king learns that it was Yuuya who apprehended Luna and brought her, along with Alexia, back to his house. Troubled by the notion of Alexia staying overnight at a man's residence, the king's emotions erupt, envisioning his desire to strike down Yuuya. Owen reassures him that nothing untoward occurred, but the king remains skeptical, asserting that he cannot be certain since he was not present. Meanwhile, the masked individual who had previously attempted to harm Lexia is revealed to be the first Prince Rigar. Informed by his subordinate, he discovers that a noble supporter had employed Luna to assassinate Lexia, a plot foiled by Yuuya, ultimately leading Luna to become Alexia's protector. Intrigued by the news of Yuuya's invitation to the palace, Rigar conceives a plan. Entrusting his subordinate with a secret weapon, a magical sealing barrier capable of nullifying all magic within its range, he aims to render the magic-wielding guards, including the king, powerless. The only remaining obstacles would then be Owen and Luna. 
While his subordinate expresses concern over potential exposure if the plan fails, Rigar believes they can shift blame onto Yuya during his visit to the palace. Taking advantage of an extra day off following the academy's competition, Yuya prepares for his journey to the capital. Engaging in farming activities, he encounters a sheep-like monster, defeating it and obtaining various items, including a rare bedding item that promises a remarkable sleeping experience. Proceeding to the nearby town, Yuya is taken aback by the presence of cat girls in this world. He heads to the guild in search of trading opportunities, as he possesses no money in this unfamiliar realm. Perplexed by his unfamiliar name and origin, the guild master speculates that Yuya's appearance suggests noble lineage due to its refined nature. Yuya insists that he's just an ordinary person, but the guild master finds it difficult to believe. As they discuss where Yuya intends to sell his goods, the master is astounded when Yuya demonstrates his item box skill, producing a plethora of peppers. The master examines the peppers and is captivated by their exceptional quality, although Yuya believes they are merely average produced from a local shop. Impressed, the master offers to purchase all the peppers for a hundred gold coins. Yuya, unsure of the value of the currency in the kingdom, admits his ignorance. The master explains that an average family could comfortably live for a year with just five gold coins, implying that a hundred gold coins would sustain a family for twenty years. Additionally, the master provides Yuya with a guild card for identification purposes. Curious about how to reach the capital, Yuya inquires, prompting the master to inform him about the horse carriages that travel directly to the capital. Upon arriving in the bustling capital, Yuya is overwhelmed by the sheer number of people. Akatsuki points towards the palace, and Yuya begins to worry, feeling out of place. Entering the palace, Yuya is greeted by Owen, who informs him that they will be meeting the king immediately. Panic sets in as Yuya fears he is unprepared, but Owen reassures him that it will be an informal audience. Inside the chamber, Lexia and Luna wait, and Yuya respectfully pays his respects to the king. However, the king immediately brings up Alexia's proposal, losing his composure as he suspects Yuya of seducing his daughter. Owen manages to calm the king down, but he remains unimpressed as Yuya has brought no gifts for Alexia. Thinking quickly, Yuya presents the bedding set he acquired from the sheep. Although flattered, the king interprets it as an attempt to seduce his daughter right in front of him. Owen intervenes, explaining that Yuya is unaware of their customs, leaving Yuya perplexed. Lexia clarifies that offering bedding as a gift signifies an intention to marry and share a bed with the recipient. Realizing his mistake, Yuya grows anxious, but before the king can take action, they are suddenly attacked by assassins. The king orders his guards to fire, but one of the assailants activates a magic sealing barrier, intercepting the arrows. The assassins engage in combat, but Yuya, aided by night, easily defeats them all. Luna remarks on Yuya's increased strength, and Lexia embraces him, praising his valor. Luna, feeling jealous, attempts to separate them, while the king glares at Yuya. In the midst of the commotion, Lexia scolds the king for attacking her savior. Their discussion is interrupted by Owen, who reveals the discovery of Rigar's crest on one of the assassins. Owen approaches Yuya, pleading for his assistance, explaining that the kingdom is in grave danger. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to subscribe our channel, Any Explainer.